I, I got to get back to when you were talking about not uh, seeking a mate right now, not dating, as you put it, uh, because you still had clingy, uh, clinginess that you were talking about. But can you explain it a little bit more for somebody that's kind of going through it and they're kind of confused? Well, I think, one, I want all of my focus to be on doing this right now, on speaking out yeah. so that I'm empowering yeah. other women and yeah. building up my children as they grow and things like that. So I just I just want to focus right. on this right now. But then there's also, you know, the clinginess that I was talking about. For me, it's not like a, like a, a physical clinginess. It's not like I need to right. be with him all the time or calling him all the time or texting or any of those right, kinds right. of things. It's more like there's this energetic clinginess. It's I don't know a better way to describe it, but there's there's that energy that kind of clings. Um, okay. And so as long as I'm feeling that, I'm not going to put myself in that position because I feel like I'm. that means that I'm just not ready yet. I haven't reached the point of healing, but that doesn't make me unabusable. In fact, I think that self-awareness is what makes me unabusable. The biggest thing is to focus on you. And one of the reason that financial abuse is so prevalent is because it works. It's because yeah, yeah, that's one okay. of the biggest reasons that women don't leave. Like. Uh, draw, draw the strength from anybody that you listen to. Draw the strength from them. You know, there was a point in the relationship where I started setting some money aside to invest for myself and was only going to have yeah. my name on the accounts. He threw a fit. He threw a fit. And so I didn't do it, which I regret. Oh, but, um, yeah. well, it, happens. it happened. He just, yeah. I mean, it was a temper tantrum. It was so yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And you called it, you called it right though. It was a temper tantrum. Yeah, right? all of it. The, our whole separation, it's just been one big temper tantrum that has not gone the way that he intended. He, all he wanted was control. Oh yeah. Was to control oh, yeah. me. He, and it has well, to he thought you were going back down. See that's yeah. that's see that's the miscalculation. See, narcs miscalculate so bad. First, their entire life is one huge miscalculation. Okay. Well, hopefully, you know, I we'll see what happens when I get them back and we all heal together. I I want to teach them forgiveness and I want to teach them, you know, um, it's it's a tough situation when you're talking about parents though, because even if the father's a narc, do you really want the children to have no relationship with them? Like. I didn't really learn a lot about who I was until I developed a relationship with my father because I am my father's daughter in so many ways. And I, I had all of these traits and characteristics that I didn't know where they came from because they didn't match up with my mom. So um, so when I got to know him, that's when I was like, oh, and they're, you know, the kids are they're half him. So they're going to have some of his traits and characteristics. Narcs are still human. And so even though he's a narc, like they're they're still going to have some of, you know, his. Um, uh, I can't think of a positive quality right now. Come on, there's got to be something. Be good. There so your laughter right now is funny because you you looked up trying to think. Of, well, go on. well, one thing is for sure. <laughs> I know you. I know you are. I, 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 what's funny is I'm sitting here trying to have a straight face and I'm going like, girl, you can just right now you can't think of nothing because you're in a whole other frame of mind right now. <laughs> you, know, you had five girls. You got five girls. I got five girls. Yeah, they're awesome. You're, I'm, you're I'm an amazing. Them. You're an amazing mom, um, and I refuse to. I refuse. Yeah. I refuse to go down that road because I'm not going. I know you don't want to cry. Yeah. So I've, I'm saying I've been gone out of that environment for eight months. You know, that's when I left wow. for Hawaii. So it's been that long, and I still have to remind myself sometimes that I'm not in an abusive environment anymore. Nobody's abusing me right now. Right. Like I literally have to say right. that to myself sometimes. Nobody's abusing me right, right now. Yeah, it's broke up a little bit. He's running out of what again? He's running out of ways to torture me because, you know, he took the kids from me. And now oh. he took the older kids from me. Once that once that was over with, um, that happened, what, three, four weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, and so now he's bored and he's like, how can I torture her now? And so now he's, you know, yeah. starting up stupid shit. Again. You're right. So I, you're, you're me. Right. Because I'm about right. to do something that, that I need you to be patient with and try to have some fun with. We're going to play a game with your page. We're going to pick a posting that you did. This is called the pick a post game with your Instagram page. So I'm going to your page. I don't know if you're able to do this right now because you're on your phone. I think we talked about this before. You're on your phone. Yeah. I don't know if you can pull it up or not, but I'm going to read something to you from your page. Okay. I gotta do that and make my noise because we're gonna play this game now. I just initiated it yesterday. I just started it yesterday. If it gets no traction, I really don't care, but I wanna play it anyhow. So we're gonna play it. I'm gonna pick something. I'm gonna pick something at random. So I just spin that up here like that. I'm gonna spin it again. I get to the, okay, I got to your page. I'm just gonna pick something then I'm gonna ask you, 
What did you mean when you posted this? Are you ready? I'm going to read it out to you. It says, right. abusers, con abusers control, manipulate, and make you feel like you are the one with the problem. Stand up, speak out, and take back your life. You are not to blame. You posted that on July 23rd. What did you mean when, what were you thinking when you posted that? I mean, I think it's absolutely true. This type of abuse causes the victim to feel crazy. And, you know, you like you literally feel like you're losing your mind. I remember a day when I looked at him, we were arguing and I said to him, I'm losing my shit. Can you see that I'm losing my shit? And he, he said, yes, I can. And like, that was it. So you literally feel like you're going crazy. But and I was always trying to, you know, fix the relationship. I thought that if I was better, if I was anything er than I was, then right. we, he would stop abusing me and we would be happy and everything would be fine. Right. right? So I was always trying yeah. to fix myself to fix the relationship. So I always thought that I was the one with the problem. Um, but I think what I love is on the Internet, there's like this this whole subculture, which is it's sad that it exists, but it's um, super empowering. But all of the empaths who are kind of coming together and saying, look, I'm, I'm not doing this narc thing anymore. And so I'm going to tell my story so that the next person sees the red flags and doesn't even get in anywhere close yes. to being in the situation that I'm in. Yes. So that's the speaking. Yes. That's why I think that speaking is so empowering. So when I got to Hawaii, yes, I had is. the coolest experience. I was I had been in Hawaii less than a week, didn't really have any friends yet, was still kind of getting my bearings around there, learning the area and everything. And one night I went to a bar and I'm sitting at the bar and this guy comes up and we strike up a conversation. A couple minutes later, his wife comes in and joins the conversation. And she she and I, there was like an immediate connection there. And um, we we exchanged phone numbers. And then like a day or two later, we're on the phone with each other. And, you know, I'm yes. sobbing because I, I'm, it's still so raw for me. So I'm just sobbing, telling her right, my story right. and everything. And she says, she says, September, 10 years ago, I walked away from my kids for basically the same reasons. And I was like, moms don't walk away. Like, that's wow. what they're banking on. That's what they're banking on is moms yes. don't yes. walk away. And so they, yes. like me doing that was like, a, it was so out of left field for them. They couldn't even process it. So, um, but I met this woman, she said that to me. And then the other thing that she said was for every one of us that does this and speaks out, we're empowering thousands and thousands of other women. Yeah. And so that's Absolutely really correct. stuck with me. And that's Absolutely really why, correct. like, it's so important to me to use my voice. And then another epiphany that I just had the other day is um, they took everything. Like they, they literally took my entire world from me, right? The only thing that I have left right now is my voice. And I'm going to speak loud and I'm going to not stop. So I'm unsilenceable oh and I'm unabusable. Goodness. So there you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I, you put down here. Yes. I've told people that he's so good at convincing others that I'm crazy. He even convinced me that I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. It says it took months of therapy and reading several books to show me that all victims of this type of abuse end up wondering if they're the crazy one, the ones to blame for all the problems. Stand up and speak. It is so healing, it empowers others who are still suffering to speak. You wrote that. You wrote that back in July. And we are now in the month of August. And you have proved those words true by standing up and speaking out. But I know this has been breaking up and stuff like that. But since I got signal, I got to pick something else. Uh, I'll pick something else. Okay, I pick this. Oh, I pick this. Oh, I pick this. I pick oh, that. God. I pick that. I pick that. Go ahead, dude. So okay, so the one in the middle was taken. Was taken. Um, I, it was taken like January or February, and he left in March. So it was like. At the absolute peak, I was at my lowest possible point, and you can see it on my face. You can see how much pain. Yes, I, I yes. The one, yeah. the one with the big, big smile. That's me. I was speaking on stage. I was at. I was on top of the world at that point in my life. We had become friends by this point, but I don't think that we had started dating yet. So it was like right yeah. as we were, like right at that point where we right. were about to start dating. Okay. And then the one, mm -hmm. the other one, um, is 
a shot that was taken last December. So I had been out of the abuse for about nine months at that point. So, and I just, my aunt actually put these together for me and she said, you look at the difference, like, look at okay. you, how much you changed, how much, you know, what he did to you changed yes. you. And so in but yes. that middle one, like you yes. can see that pain and you can see, yes. I think in the, the one where I'm standing, you can see that I'm still healing. I was, I don't think I'm healed yet, yes. even now you can see that there's, there's yeah. healing happening. Go ahead. Well, well, yeah, that was December. So that was before I fled. So I was still in the midst of the stalking. I was still in the midst of, you know, the family court stuff, like that was all still going on. So I think I had come a long, long way just being away from him. Actually, the, the best thing that I did was get that first protective order because it forced no contact. And because he's an attorney, he wasn't going to mess with that. And, you know, he was going to try to keep everything by the book. And so that no contact, that 14 days of no contact was like probably the best 14 days that I could have ever asked for because he couldn't, wow. he couldn't do anything to me psychologically. Um, and so, so yeah, that picture, I was still in the midst of the stalking. I was still in the midst of the family court stuff. And, you know, now I'm here and I'm, I'm okay. You know, like that's all over. I got through the hell. I kept going and I wouldn't say I'm on the other side because I'm not with my kids yet. And that's, you know, to yeah, me, right, right. when I'm back with my kids, that's when I'll be on the other side. Yeah. But, um, so I'm still in the midst of it in that sense. I still have a lot of pain because I miss my kids. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, I'm st I've healed. I've healed so much. Yeah, yeah. it's so different. I, yeah. so. I said, but it's about control. The stocking is about control. Yeah. So. Yeah. control. And uh, oh, thank you very much, whoever wrote that. Thank you so much, September and Narc Abuse TV. Very empowering. If you know anybody that needs to get their story out and detoxing and healing, this is a vehicle and a platform they can use along with others. Uh, DM me for that. And uh, please get a hold of uh, hashtag unabusable September. Thank you, September. We'll see you later. Thank you. Great this show. Great show. We'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody.